Welcome back to another episode from Classic Replay. This one is the Atari ST. If you could do me the honour of liking or subscribing to the channel, I've had it on good authority that you'll all receive 10 years good luck. On with the show. This is Games We Loved for the Atari ST. The Atari 520 ST has twice the power of many business microphones. Let's not forget it was released 35 years ago, release. June 1985. The Commodore Amiga didn't arrive until late 1987. It can paint pictures and make them move. When I saw that eye opening and closing, I was blown away. The first ever button matcher. That's why we're here. Yet it costs less than £300. The Atari 520ST. Power without the price. In today's money, that's around £1,300. This is the game that went on to influence the now legendary Ico on the Sony PlayStation 2. In Jan 1993, ST Format awarded Another World number 32 in the 50 finest Atari ST games of all time. It was also the first game to feature animated cutscenes. And it was featured in 1001 video games to play before you die by the general editor Tony Mott. The first few levels are quite relaxed and simple and will drag you in. But run like hell when you see this fella. There are moments where you feel like you're playing Dragon's Lair. Even today, if you've not played it, Another World is an experience that you can't afford to miss. Heavily inspired by Conan the Destroyer, Steve Brown came up with the idea after watching hours and hours of footage of the movie. The barbarian fighter animation were painstakingly ripped from the movie, with Gary Carr and Steve Brown re-performing the moves behind a camera. It's also the game famous for page 3 model Maria Whitaker, glamour model and pin-up of the 80s. It's so good that ST Format in Jan 1993 awarded it number 46 out of 50 of the finest Atari ST games of all time. There's a fantastic two-player practice option. Defeat your foes in the throne room, dungeon, lava bed or dark forest. Defeat Drax and get the girl. Show me the money. You're definitely going to need it in this game. Heavily inspired by R-Type, you'll need to kill the baddies, pick up their money and spend it like a good wife in order to upgrade your craft. This is both a horizontal and vertical scroller and on the ST, I prefer it to the original R-Type. ST Former rated it the second best shoot 'em up in 1990. The real bonus of this game is when two players get together. It's absolute dynamite. It's a better game in the arcade and on the 8 bits, but Speed Freaks will still find this a fantastic little arcade conversion for the Atari ST. It plays identical to the Amiga version, and strangely, there's more speech on this version than on the Amiga. But all the frills and spills of the arcade original are captured here nicely. It really is a stunning conversion, so don't keep Nancy waiting. I personally love this one in the arcade. This is a fantastic arcade conversion to the Atari ST. The controls are tight, the graphics are wonderful, and the speed is authentic. The challenge here will keep you going for weeks, if not months. And I still play it some 30 years later. There's no greater feeling than racing towards the finish line, with the back of the car bellowing with flames, or a last gasp rush to the pit lane, in the hope that there's still enough time. If you fail to make it back, it's game over. There's eight races in total, 100 competitors, and it's a little bit faster than the Commodore Amiga version. Sound is probably the only weakness of this game, but who cares when it's this much fun? The king has been killed by a dragon. Evil has taken over the land. Step forward, the Mega Twins. There's three levels on offer, the earth, the heavens, and the sea. Both of our protagonists have different powers. One is good with the sword, and the other excels with magic. I couldn't decide which one I preferred more, this or Rodland, so it came down to the flip of a coin and barrels of fun. This is a bit of a strange one. It's a French game or comic about the American Civil War purchased from a British shop. Although a strategy game at heart, it leans heavily towards an arcade style of play with clever little graphic sequences throughout 
being able to play a two-player game against a friend is where this game I think really excels. The game is absolutely saturated with French humour. Music and sound complement the game as you go along and it just goes to show that the French are just as obsessed with America as the Brits. As for the gameplay, the action is maddeningly addictive. Anyone should enjoy this game. Identical to the Commodore Amiga version and plays just as great in every department. I've only ever beaten this game twice. That's over the span of a 30 year period. Some say it's too hard for its own good, but I absolutely love the challenge. Yes, it's a tough game, a tough challenge, but that's exactly what the arcade machine was all about. Ocean Software have done a fantastic, immense job of converting the arcade to the humble 16-bit ST. Talking of great arcade conversions, they don't come any better than Paperboy. It looks like the arcade original, it plays like the arcade original, and it's just as hard. All the charm and sheer addictiveness of the coin-up original has been packed to the rafters. The bonus features in the park are especially rewarding, which all adds up to a game that has to be on any list like this. Pedaling your bike down a typical American side street has never been so much fun, but more importantly, uncivilized. In fact, the only thing missing is the arcade handlebars. When you consider this was a Sega Mega Drive launch title, we were very lucky to have got this game for the 16-bit systems. As with the original, you jet around all over the place, blasting the bad guys, only this time over 13 stages. The same enemies in the first game make an appearance here, but there's also an abundance of new enemies to blast your way through. Yes, the graphics and the movement has a slightly jerky nature to it, but the fast pace more than makes up for it. For me, the best bike racing game on the ST. It leaves Sega's other offering, Outrun, completely and well and truly stalled on the line. The feeling of speed is absolutely incredible. You could use the mouse or joystick control, save all those lovely high scores, change the scan rate of the screen, and contains all five tunes from the arcade original. It's an absolute brilliant arcade conversion for the Atari ST. And it leaves you asking a very important question. Was there actually a gap between the 16-bit computer technology and consoles? I'm not so sure. It's time to let your hair down, drive as fast as possible without getting caught by the cops. It's so good that Ace Magazine included this game in their top 100 list of 1987 and 1988. The road updates really fast and the presentation impresses. It doesn't quite manage the Amiga version's heights in graphics and sound, but that's only to be expected. What we do have is the same thrill and wild acceleration. We get four cars to choose from. The Porsche, a Ferrari, a Chevy, just joking, a Lamborghini. It's no surprise that three of the people that worked on this game later went on to work on the Need for Speed. Regardless of what system you play Turrican 2 on, its game design is a milestone in shoot 'em up action. In fact, it's so good that Retro Gamer, in September 2004, issue 8, voted it the 76th best game of all time. Turrican 2 is one hell of a big game. It's also some of the most impressive programming you will see ever on the Atari ST. It's just one of those games you have to play to believe. This is one of the most difficult but fun games I've played on the Atari ST. Everything is extremely polished in this game. One minute you're traversing platforms, the next you're rolling around the floor. Life proves tough for Mr. Ness, as you'll need to blast through six levels of varying difficulty. The 1920s and the Windy City might not be all they cracked up to be. When Zenon first hit the streets, I, like most people, was absolutely blown away. It felt new, innovative and absolutely essential. I can't recommend it enough for anybody looking for that ultimate one more go shoot em up. The proof for me is in the pudding and I've been coming back to this for the last 30 years. In fact, I still think this is one of the best shoot-em-ups around, even today. The wonderful thing about the Atari ST 
properties with so many fantastic games. Dungeon Master, The Secret of Monkey Island, Rick Dangerous, Time Bandit, Bubble Bobble. I mean, where do you even start? I'm not even sure how to explain what OIS is. What I can tell you is it's still one of the best games around today. The graphics are tiny, not particularly detailed, but the whole thing is massively satisfying. There's five galaxies of planets to explore, and there's even a construction kit. There's elements of Choplifter, Gravitar, Thrust, and even maybe Lunar Lander. You've got to get in there Rambo style, smash up all the factories, destroy all the land defences, and rescue the little oids that stand there and wave at you. Then it's time to fly off and dock with the mothership. Oids also appears in the book 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. With Retro Gamer voting it the 83rd best game of all time. Remember, this is not a top list of games. These are my personal favourites and I believe games we used to love. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye!